Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to have a look at the uh, automatic gearbox, so the DSG, uh, that's Direct Shift Gearbox, which stands for. Um, <clears throat> this was uh, a question that was raised by uh, Anthony, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we haven't, um, uh, something we've never covered before actually, I don't think. I'm going to show you basically how it, how it works, how it operates in the vehicle. Uh, lots of people probably only ever driven manuals, also it's slightly different because we don't do a manual version of the California, uh, everything is the, the auto, the DSG, uh, and we're just going to go through that now with you. Uh, so as you can see here, this is the actual gear stick itself, uh, and to start the vehicle, you have to have your foot on the brake, and then turn it over. Now that foot on the brake is just a safety uh, precaution that's on there. That will allow you then to do two things. One, it will allow you to start the vehicle, uh, and it will also allow you then to move the gear stick from park position uh, into either reverse, neutral, or drive. Uh, so the vehicle started, we're in the showroom today so I'm not going to actually start the vehicle but uh, uh, if you started the vehicle at this point now and then you press the button at the side of the gear stick here and move it from park into got reverse first, neutral and drive. Uh, you notice on the drive bit as well it says drive stroke S, S for sports uh, and I'll show you that through in a minute. Um, but whenever you change these, it does actually tell you on the dashboard. Uh, so on the 6.1, uh, this is the, the digital uh, dashboard, and on here you've got a big D. Uh, on the uh, on the there, it tells you obviously you're in D and we're in 1, so into first gear at the moment uh, that's in there. Uh, if you've got a 6 or a 5, um, again it does show you in the top corner of your display which actual gear you're actually in, uh, whether you're in drive, reverse, etc. as well. Uh, so you've got a visualisation so you can see it um, that's there. Um, I've had a few people ask me in the past um, about the gearing because you'll notice on here that the uh, which gear you're actually in uh, is actually on the opposite side of the driver. So this particular gear stick is obviously uh, is what they use if the vehicles turn around the other way. They only produce it in this format on commercial vehicles, so uh, they don't produce it with the letterings on the other side. Um, so obviously you, it is a little bit difficult to see them where you're in, but obviously you've got the display that's on the on the dashboard, so it's quite easy when you you're looking at your dash, you pull it down, you're looking at your your dash, it's on here, and you can see what gear you're in anyway. So you don't actually really need the uh, those things on the side there anyway because you are just looking straight into the uh, into the dash to tell you which gear you're in. So obviously park is for parking. And if you pop it into reverse, uh, on here we've got reversing camera so you get reversing camera come up and your parking sensors are on as well and obviously then that would allow you to be into there. If you pop it into neutral uh, just turn the parking sensor off. So in neutral, um, obviously the gearbox isn't engaged uh, at all in the vehicle. Um, so if you were stuck in traffic, for example, you could put it into uh, into neutral if you wanted to. Um, and then you following one from on there is the drive uh, stroke sports one. Uh, so drive is the main, is the one that you use 90% of the time. Uh, and that's the one obviously which makes the vehicle go forward. So you're in drive, um, you've got your foot on the brake, obviously which is stopping you from going anywhere probably still got your handbrake on, uh, so if you take your handbrake off and release your foot brake, uh, the vehicle is then going to move forward. Um, even before you touch the uh, accelerator, generally speaking, it will the vehicle will start to, to move forward as soon as you've done that, it'll engage. Um, obviously, since you put the accelerator, you'll move forward a lot quicker, uh, and it will then go up throughout the gears, so go from one, two, three, four, uh, and so on, all the way through. Um, and as soon as you put your foot back onto the brake, obviously you're going to slow the vehicle down then. So sports mode uh, that's in there, basically what that does is it changes the characteristics of the box. Um, so if you're in drive, in the normal uh, drive mode, uh, when you get to a certain rev range, uh, it will actually change up a gear. Uh, what sports mode does is it lets it rev a lot longer, uh, so that obviously you're changing up a little bit, uh, so you've got more speed as you're, as you're driving through. And to activate that sports mode, uh, you just press it down as such. Uh, and then you get an S on your gearbox, and then you know obviously then you're, you're in that sports mode and it's doing that. Um, for 95% of the time, uh, you'd always be in drive, um, and I know most people who do drive automatics very, very rarely use that, uh, that function anyway. Uh, now with all of these uh, gearboxes, you also have a manual function as well, or semi-manual uh, that's there. So uh, we're in the position here, if you move it to one side, so push it to this side, uh, you'll then on your dash it'll say M1, as, or whichever gear you're in, it'll say manual, and then they can push it up or down, so move the gears up or down, 
uh, and that will actually change the gearing as you go along. Uh, now not to panic, if you are in, in, in that mode, for example, and you come to a stop and you forget, it will go back down the gear. So if you were in fifth, for example, and you're coming to a roundabout, something like that, it, it, it does protect itself, this gearbox. It won't allow you to do any, uh, any damage to it. Uh, in that sense, it would automatically then bring you back down to those, uh, back down to first gear anyway. And then to take it out of that, you literally just flip the gearbox back over to the side. Uh, just the last couple of, couple of things that's probably worth noting on the uh, on the gearbox. Uh, this is, as I said, it's a DSG gearbox. Uh, it's not a traditional gearbox. Um, the way I like to try and explain it uh, is it's a bit like a manual gearbox with really, lots of electronics uh, attached to it. So there are a few slight differences. Uh, so, for example, in the park function, uh, when you put something into park, uh, the vehicle can. Uh, roll back ever so slightly, uh, but not not a huge amount, but ever uh, ever so slightly on there. So uh, it's definitely worth using your handbrake as you would do with a, a manual gearbox, uh, for example, that's with these as well. So that's a, just a slight difference uh, to say a true automatic, which pretty much you put it in park and it stops. Uh, so this was just a quick video today on the automatic gearbox, uh, but we thought as we've got a bit more time we'd do a quick uh, question and answer session as well uh, at the end, so we've had a few questions in. Uh, and the first one kind of relates a little bit to the gearbox uh, side of it. So uh, Chris Strong um, mentioned on one of the last videos, uh, referenced the levelling, uh, about the gearbox rolling back slightly. So uh, what Chris is actually saying is perfectly right, and I didn't even think to mention it, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Um, so you've levelled your vehicle and you're on the chocks, for example, and then you're going to swivel your seat round. Obviously, you're going to have to release the handbrake at that point. Uh, so you will get a little bit of movement uh, on the vehicle. It will roll slightly um, on that uh, once you release the handbrake, uh, just why it locks itself into position on the uh, in the park uh, on the gearbox. That's like a characteristic of the DSG gearbox uh, and the way it works. But it will only be a little bit, but you need to be aware of it because, in fairness, it might be a bit of a shock to you uh, if you suddenly think your vehicle is going to roll off and roll off your uh, roll off your chock etc that's on there but it will uh, it will come up um, might be worth uh, trying that <laughs> that one out if you've got one you've probably experienced it before anyway when you when you've put it into there and you're taking it off and you've got a bit of movement when you're swiveling your seats around but uh, but very good question and uh, uh, so thanks for that Chris uh, so we recently did the video on the uh, roof section uh, that was on there and Mike Hage asked uh, whether it was actually waterproof. Uh, yes it is waterproof, the, uh, the canvas material that's on the top of it from on there. Um, obviously if it's raining uh, you don't want to get rain coming into the vehicle. Uh, so on, just to clarify, we're talking about the uh, the 6.1 now, obviously, and on the 6, uh, some of the 6s, uh, they changed the canvas material type at that particular point. It's always been waterproof uh, on the on the California, uh, but the original ones were a cotton material, um, which is still, cotton still uh, waterproof, it's not a problem that's in there, um, but with those, obviously, you had, uh, if you have experienced a cotton tent before, uh, if you put something on the inside of it and it was wet on the outside, uh, you could get water ingress coming through, uh, through those. Uh, with the new material now, uh, the uh, new material up the top is, is, is waterproof. Even with the vents that are in the top as well, uh, so you'll see obviously you've got two vents on either side uh, on the top canvas that's there, uh, but they're underneath the actual lid itself. Um, now in all instances, uh, in normal weather, uh, raining conditions, etc., there's no problems here at all. Uh, obviously if you're up in the Scottish Highlands as an example and you've got rain which instead of coming down, because uh, it tends to when it's uh, in winter time there, the rain tends to be coming across ways instead. Uh, obviously then things like the, uh, the vents on the top could, uh, you could get a little bit of watering but um, at that point you might be thinking whether you want the roof up in the first place. Uh, so last question for today, uh, Peter asked whether you can get a bike uh, in the California Grand in the 680 version. Uh, yes you certainly can, um, obviously your bed uh, that's in the back you'd have to uh, flip that up uh, onto the side so that was uh, uh, away from uh, away from there uh, and then you could get a bike in there. I think you probably only get one uh, realistically uh, that's in that actual gap uh, with the with the uh, handlebars that's in there uh, but there's plenty of space on the length on this 680 because uh, you've got quite a lot of room um, that's there so you could definitely get uh, get a bike that's in there as well. Uh, alternatively if you didn't want to put a bike on there you could put a tow bar on the back uh, and you can get one of the uh, Thule um, bike racks that you can do for two and for three carrying bikes. I think there might even be a fourth one actually I've seen somewhere as well uh, that goes onto the back of uh, back of that. Uh, but yeah, you can certainly get at least one bike in there. Um, again, if anybody else has uh, had a bikes in the back of a California Grand, uh, let us know if you think you can get more than one and that would be interesting uh, to see. Uh, I think it would depend on what type of bike you've got as well actually. In fact, my, uh, if it was a road bike, you might probably find you get two in there maybe.
so I hope you enjoyed today's video, found it informative, uh, it's in there. Um, if you uh, if you did, uh, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, that would be great, it would help, uh, help the channel out. Uh, if you don't subscribe, please subscribe and we'll see you next time.